Yes. As we've reported, the state's insurance commissioner announced major changes, and that was back in September. Two months later, how well are those changes working so far? Our Becca Habiger has been tracking this growing crisis for years, speaking with homeowners and the insurance commissioner. We're at a critical stage when it comes to the availability and affordability of insurance. I sat down recently with California Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara via Zoom from his office in Los Angeles. Having an uninsurable state is not an option. If you own a home, you probably have a mortgage, and lenders generally require homeowners to have fire insurance, which I'll refer to as homeowners insurance throughout this story. But in the past two years, most of the major companies in California's homeowners insurance market have paused or restricted new business, causing availability to plummet and prices to go up. We are seeing these tremendous spikes in, in premiums. Companies cite the rising risk of wildfires due to climate change, the increasing cost of materials to rebuild a house and a need for updated state regulations. How would you explain what's happening to the average Californian? We're seeing the impact of some of the most devastating wildfires in our history, coupled still with this level of inflation, which now really impedes the cost of rebuilding. With so many companies choosing not to write new homeowners insurance policies, many people are turning to something called the California Fair Access to Insurance Requirements, or FAIR plan. Known as the insurer of last resort, it is increasingly becoming many Californians' only resort. We don't want a FAIR plan that's growing. We're essentially putting the riskiest homes under the fair plan, putting it essentially in them not be able to afford a future peril. The state mandated fair plan is bare bones, offering just basic fire insurance. It's also expensive. I'm single, divorced, I'm on a fixed income, and I don't know what I'll do if I can't afford the house. Tuolumne County homeowner Kathy Townsend is on the fair plan after two insurance companies dropped her. My payment has doubled and I'm not making any more money. I sat down with her and other homeowners to see how the insurance crisis is affecting them. We moved here in 2014 and we've been canceled by our homeowners insurance at least five times, possibly six. The costs keep going up and I don't know what folks are going to do. It's just terrifying. I think we all feel angry because you don't know what to do and you don't know where to turn. Mark Dykin runs a homeless shelter in Tuolumne County and says this crisis doesn't just affect homeowners. As these costs go up, people who are right there on that margin now can't afford that house they've had for a long time. Or uh, their rent goes up because their uh, landlord has to pay for this increased insurance cost. Some people ask, why move to a place like this if the risk is so high? Jim Schmidt, a former seasonal firefighter with the U.S. Forest Service, has lived in the area nearly 40 years and has seen the climate change. When we moved here, wildfire was not a big deal. To blame people that live here for, you know, moving to a high-risk area is kind of inaccurate. It's, it's not fair because the conditions changed after we got here. Some insurance companies still doing business in California are requiring homeowners to do wildfire mitigation or home hardening on their property if they want to keep their policy. But those efforts can be expensive. Last year alone, we spent over $10,000 doing vegetation mediation. And some people still have their policies canceled or non-renewed. We're in a crisis in Tuolumne County. We are losing residents. I caught up with Tuolumne County Supervisor Ryan Campbell outside one of two resilience centers the county opened a year ago. It's a safeguard for emergency events when evacuations are required. He says the county has invested in wildfire mitigation efforts on the community level and would like to see insurance premiums and available reflect that. For people that are on fixed incomes, people that are, are poor, people that are seniors, uh, it is just not feasible for them to be able to afford house payments, to be able to afford groceries, uh, and also be able to pay four, five thousand dollars a year for homeowners insurance. It's, it's ridiculous. In El Dorado County, I met Laura and Charlie Callahan in 2019. Their premium had quadrupled to $4,200 a year. And we're on a fixed income. In 2020, they left California and moved to Tennessee. It really came to homeowners insurance was the big one because it was an unknown. You know, we didn't know what it, the future held for that. If we even were able to keep getting insurance, much less how much we we're going to have to pay for it. 
The growing crisis prompted Governor Gavin Newsom to issue an executive order urging the insurance commissioner to act quickly. That was September 21st, just days after the legislature failed to pass a last-minute reform before the end of session. You know, there's no doubt that California is at an insurance crossroads. Hours later, Commissioner Lara announced what his department calls the Sustainable Insurance Strategy. This is a comprehensive strategy to modernize our insurance market. Since voters approved Prop 103 in the 80s, insurance companies have to get state approval before raising their rates. Companies say the process takes too long with too much red tape, and they've been asking for changes for years. As part of the state's new strategy, Commissioner Lara struck a deal with insurance companies. It includes a faster, more efficient review process when companies request rate increases. Companies will also be allowed to use wildfire risk prediction technology to justify those increases. Currently, companies can only use past climate data. As insurance expert Carl Sussman puts it, They're trying to find a way to come up with new ways of predicting loss because as long as they can predict loss, then they can properly price products. And if they can properly price products, companies come back, more companies come back, competition ensues, and then at the end of the day, hopefully we're all paying lower premiums, not higher. So what do homeowners get in this deal? A company must write 85% of all its homeowners insurance policies in California's high-risk areas like Tuolumne County, hopefully taking those people off the fair plan. Companies must also offer discounts for people who do wildfire mitigation on their property. Isn't that the best deal where everybody leaves a little upset? Laura says the changes should coax companies back into writing new policies in California once more. But consumer advocates worry the changes will drive up prices prices for homeowners. So I asked the commissioner, is it fair to say as part of the correction process here, the, the market coming back, things might get worse before they get better? I honestly think that we are at, I think, at a peak. A lot of these uh, regulations that we're working on, as they're coming into fruition, you're going to now see the industry really coming back because through this agreement, they made it very clear they want to stay here. They want to continue to grow. So you're going to start seeing change, I think, in the next couple months, hopefully. He says his department is already hiring more analysts to expedite the rate increase review process, though the deadline for the full implementation of his new strategy is December 2024. Something needs to be done right now. Supervisor Campbell says low-income homeowners on fixed incomes don't have time to wait. People are going to have to move away from our beautiful communities just because they can't afford fire insurance. Some are leaving the state. Others are hoping for change. I was born here, my great-grandparents were here. No, I'm not leaving California. That was Rebecca Habiger reporting. This problem isn't specific to California. Across the country, for various reasons, insurance companies are also raising rates and leaving states like Florida, Texas, and Louisiana. It is such a big problem that U.S. Senators are now investigating. The Budget Committee sent letters to 41 insurance companies demanding answers. The question, who may be next? The responses were due on Friday, but the committee has not announced the results just yet. So stay with us for updates. And keep in mind, for people struggling to pay for coverage, we do have tips on our website, abc10.com.